I've lost track of the amount of times I've said dumb f***er on this ride because we have dumb f***ers that are moving into the bike lane. Big thanks to Jason at E-Wheels for allowing me to test the ET Max demo. The night before. Yo, what's up? Duff here. You're looking at the demo ET Max and I'm going to be charging it with the Roger charger for the first time. You may notice that the uh, the charge port in this is different than uh, pretty much, I don't know of any wheel that I, I've had that has a screw-on plastic cap like this as opposed to rubber. This has a screw-on plastic cap and it is interesting that there's only one charge port as well. Uh, and it's a three it's a three prong uh, charge adapter. So, but anyways, I had I wrote it down to about one battery today, and we're going to charge it on the Roger charger and see how it does. So first up, we need to set this to 168 volts, right? So those of you at home, you rotate this wheel till it changes colors. Hold it for a second, and then just spin it up, spin it. Spin it till you hit your desired voltage. I'm going to say 168. I'm going to hit it. I'll hold it for like a like a second and a half. Now we're set to uh, charge this wheel to 168 volts at 9 amps, which is plenty fast enough for me. I need to put the correct ends on here. What I was going to say is it's interesting that there's only one charge port on this wheel. But yeah, there is only one. So we are now going to... Let's see, can we reach it over here? Okay, we don't want to be stretching to charge this so we're gonna move it right here we're gonna plug it in and it should just go right uh 168 okay yeah looks good two hours later all right the roger charger has completed and um it charged the wheel to 168 volts there's some question if it would or not uh put a total of 2536 watt hours back in it in a time of a uh, little over one hour and 50 minutes. Not too shabby. There she is. So yeah, should be all ready to go for my range test tomorrow. So uh, Roger Charger, good job. Yo, what's up Duff here? I just uh, charged the wheel up last night on my Roger Charger. Uh, there was an issue with prior firmwares where the wheel would not charge to a full 168 volts. It seems, apparently, with ever, whatever the current production firmware is, which I applied to this wheel when I got it, it, uh, it charged fully to 168 volts, so that's a good thing for a range test, right? So um, we should have a full battery. Those of you that saw the video yesterday, we described uh, what happened when uh, Jason uh, had a, a wobble wipeout crash. Like I mentioned, there were some scrapes on the wheel in the front. This got banged up the area where the trolley handles uh, hinge is mounted. Uh, what I didn't really notice was in the back, this took a shot as well. And this was actually bent. This was bent uh, in and down. And I was, I, I have a dead blow hammer and I actually was able, I thought at first like the, the whole frame was one piece and I was, uh, trying to, to bend it back in shape. I took the cover off, obviously, but trying to bend it back in shape when it was on the wheel, couldn't really do much. But then I realized that it's just, this is just an individual piece, a standalone piece right here. Two screws hold it on, and you have a cross member here. Once I took it off, I was able to, to get it bent back pretty much to its original shape, or close enough. Uh, that's cool. Like if you ever had a bad wipeout, you could just replace this piece. It's not, it's not like you're totally screwed, so I thought that was a... Some pretty good design by uh, Bagode. So, all right, let's go. So I'm gonna take a similar route as I've been doing with my range test since I've moved here, which is basically I, I ride from my new residence out to my old residence and back out in the Estates, which um, gets me somewhere around 50 miles. And then based on, on where I'm at at that point, I can add mileage on as needed if I still have enough battery left to do so. Uh, I plan to be riding uh, similar speeds as I have with my more recent range test, which means uh, uh, closer to 30 miles an hour plus for uh, the majority of it, as long as I, again, that I have the battery to do so. And uh, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I'm getting out a little bit later than I would like. I think it's probably around two-ish, I guess. Yeah, two-ish. Uh, I wanted to get out earlier, but I had some stuff to do. I went to the gym. 
go, go please, pass me please, don't sit there and look at me please. Went to the gym and then I, uh, what are you doing? So you got your turn signal on? You actually turning? Okay, go, there you go. Oh my God, these people, these old drivers just really are annoying sometimes. So yeah, I went to the gym and then I was working on getting that straightened out, uh, that piece straightened out. I had stuff to do, so. Got out a little bit later than uh, ideal, so be a little bit warmer than uh, is ideal, but we are on the way to my ET Max range test. All right, it wouldn't be a, a tough range test if I didn't screw something up. I uh, forgot to start the GPS as soon as I left the house. I'm about, I'm guessing about between one and a half and two miles in. I just started it, so whatever number I got, I'll, I'll pack a mile and a half on at the end. It'll be close enough. This isn't rocket science. On the uh, Rich King Memorial Greenway section of the ride, got some annoying uh, wind that's hitting me at an angle. It was never fun. I'm hoping I don't have to deal with this on uh, the majority of the ride because I've done that before. And it makes for a very uh, annoying experience. You're gonna be in the wheel for whatever it's gonna be, three hours. Uh, dealing with wind that's pushing you at an odd angle. So hopefully we can avoid that. Uh, just has been my experience so far. I'm cruising without even trying, looking down. Uh, onboard speedometer says 35 miles an hour. So speed comes easy to the ET Max. That's another reason that it's not great to do range tests later in the day here, because typically it's windier as the day goes on, as you get into the heat of the day. So these are best done uh, leaving early but uh, just not the way it worked out today. So while I was doing the work to um, straighten that piece uh, this morning, I also backed out the, the adjustment nut for the preload on the spring. I'll, I'll have to show you where that is. I backed it out so that there's more, the spring is less compressed because it seemed, it seemed like it was dropping a lot when, uh, when I stepped on it. So I'll show, you, I'll show you where the adjustment is. I watched a video from a guy that has a, a uh, ET Max, and uh, he's a pretty heavy rider. I think he's like 250 plus, and he had that adjustment uh, that adjustment nut almost all the way out. So I'm not that far, but I did move it a few turns. And suspension feels okay right now. Definitely not uh, veteran level, but uh, okay. Kind of interesting, I just glanced down to my GPS just to compare the GPS speed to the, the display on the wheel. It's only like a mile and a half, or, yeah, 1.5 mile per hour difference. Uh, GPS is only 1.5 miles an hour slower than the app, which I thought was interesting. Thought it might be more than that. We'll see if that holds true the entire ride. Yeah, this is the most annoying part right here. We'll have to ride sidewalk. It's only like, uh, I think, a mile yet, and then I get, uh, get into the bike lane in the roads again. Should be much easier to go quick. So my, uh, my new GoPro 12 is supposedly uh, on the truck for delivery today. Uh, the nice thing is, I believe it, I can use the same media mod for the external mic and stuff with the GoPro 12. And uh, I'm hoping it doesn't uh, do the random lockup deal and that the GoPro 9 that you're watching me on right now is uh, so infamous for. All right, back in the bike lane. Albeit with uh, three lanes of traffic next to me, but uh, back in the bike lane. Pushing into a persistent and annoying headwind. Exactly what I don't want to deal with on a range test, but it is what it is. Okay, just turned on to Vanderbilt Beach Road. Turned off of Livingston onto Vanderbilt. Still windy. Got some looky-loos behind me. Definitely looky-loos. Well, that was not fun. Just got off Livingston Road. In the combination, I mean, it was three lanes of traffic going 60 miles an hour, a lot of traffic for whatever reason, in the middle of the afternoon, there's a ton of traffic. And then that wind smashing me around, that was not fun. I had to, I had to work to keep myself in the lane. 
So now I am on the, um, the cycle uh, slash pedestrian path that's alongside of Collier Boulevard. I'll be able to take this all the way up to um, Mockley Road. Give myself a little bit of a break, but yeah, I hate I hate doing these when there's a when there's significant wind. It just it beats the hell out of me. Uh, right now, according to the GPS, I've gone close to 15 miles. Somewhere in that vicinity. The uh, onboard battery display on the ET Max shows I've lost one bar of battery thus far. So I don't know. That means I've used 20%. 25%, 35%, who knows? I'll check it when I stop. Now cruising the Founder Square area. This is actually the area that I had boba tea for the first time. I'd stop, but I want to get this damn thing over with, so I'm not stopping. This should be something that's familiar to any longer time viewers of the channel. Me cruising on the bike lane of Immokalee Road. Here we are, once again. It's been a few months. Feels like old times. Really bad headwind. That's always, that was always a thing on Immokalee Road. You always had uh, bad headwind one direction. And right now it seems that the headwind is hitting you right in the face. So when I turn around, it should be pushing me. So that'll be wonderful. But right now it kind of sucks. See, the other thing that happens here is, in addition to the crosswind, is when you have all this freaking traffic going by, each vehicle has its own little air wedge uh, that it creates. So that is uh, buffeting you as well. So yeah, it's kind of a pain in the ass all the way around. I'll be glad when uh, the range test is over, just as I always am. It's nice to see traffic out here has gotten better. Not atrocious man it's only gonna get worse so glad I moved I've lost track of the amount of times I've said dumb fucker on this ride because we have dumb fuckers that are moving into the bike lane <laughs> they're in the bike lane oh my god dumb fuckers let's see if we can get a picture of this dumb fucker we're driving the lady a dumb fucker this has been a few months. I figure I'll, I'll uh, do a quick uh, drive by of the old house to see if anything significant happened. Probably not, but you never know. Okay, here we go. Okay, they got some fill out front. Or is that mulch? I think that's mulch. Looks like it's mulch dumped in the uh, driveway. Interesting. Turn around. Turn around and see what else we see going the other direction. Every time I come out here, I just wonder, like, how, how did I live out here for 23 years? Oh my god. What was I thinking? Oh my god. All right, here we go. Other direction. Neighbor's house looks pretty much the same. There's my good old tractor, my house, Gravana. Uh, Other than the pile of mulch, looks good, looks similar. Old house seems to be doing a okay. It's good to know. All right, now I'm going to the park, uh, park and look at my stats, rest my feet, and uh, come up with a plan to return home. Okay, me and my good old ET Max on board. Uh, battery display is showing three bars out of five. GPS, if I add in the amount I missed in the beginning, GPS is close to 27 miles. GPS distance. Battery, according to uh, Darkness Spot, 55%. Yeah, see, that dar Darkness Spot is not calibrated for an ET Max, obviously, because the Darkness Spot thinks you only did 18.7 miles. Says the voltage is at 148.70. Um, 20. Yeah, I mean, I sh yeah, I, sh I mean, I should be able to get back. That's that's my main concern, of course. And I think the way I go back is actually slightly shorter distance. And because I have to go on some like uh, kind of narrow trails, it's it's uh, uh, slower speeds generally as well. So I think I'll make it back. 
It's annoying, the darkness bot, I mean, it, it asked me the wheel. It asked me the model wheel. It had ET Max in its listing of wheels. I selected ET Max and it still is showing inaccurate stats. That's annoying. So I'm glad I have the GPS with. So, all right, I'm just gonna stretch my feet a little bit and um, turn around. It's uh, 3.13, so I've been riding for somewhere around an hour and 15 minutes. And uh, on the way back, the good news is, is I'm gonna stop at Dunkin' Donuts and uh, probably get an iced coffee will help me uh, do the big push home. All right, no rest for the weary. We have reverse direction. Next stop, Dunkin' Donuts. The OG Dunkin' Donuts. So while I was sitting there, I fired up the Bagode app just to, um, since Darkness Bot wasn't giving me accurate stats anyway, anyways, uh, just fired it up to take a look in there. It, it said the same thing, roughly 148 volts and change. It said 57% battery, approximately, remaining. So based on those numbers, I should get, get home, right? Because uh, I was hitting a headwind most of the way out here, it's, it felt like. So I'm hoping on the way back, I have a tailwind for most of the ride back and that can make um, a big, big difference. And so will some uh, Dunkin' Donuts iced coffee. Let's go stealth mode for a little bit. One cool thing is um, when I have the visor down, the sun visor, I don't really need the, the sunscreen, the drop down sunscreen, because the visor itself is tinted. And there's a lot of traffic, so I got a way to go. Gosh, gee willikers. The LS2, the Valiant 2, it does have like some air vents and stuff that I'm still getting fresh air, even though I have the windscreen down, so it's not so bad. protected even though I'm really not it just kind of feels that way right it's weird the McDonald's they built is open for business Looks like it's hopping nice and we've also this, I think this is pretty much all happened since I've been out here last up here on the right there's a uh, brand new 7-eleven gas station I don't recall that being built last time I was out here and that's it's not open but it looks like it uh, could open at any point so yeah So much better this direction. But coming out, like I, I was constantly like having to apply like twist to my body. Uh, I'm really putting a lot of torque on my right leg. Way back, I'm just I'm, I'm doing a very easy 30, and uh, yeah, I'm not getting pushed around at all. It's so much better now. Uh, hopefully, the rest of the ride back is uh, equally calm. All right, now I got to get off the of Mockley Road. It's nice. Uh, bike path. I've always enjoyed riding this section of the ride. And it's uh, clear sailing to Dunkin' Donuts. Grab a, grab a refreshment and then uh, pushing south. Definitely accustomed to the ET Max at this point. Confidently throw this thing around and uh, kind of know what's going to happen. Except when cars come around corners wide like that. You never know what they're going to do. There it is, the original Dunkin' Donuts. My viewers have seen me come to dozens, if not hundreds of times. I, I, I have no idea. But this is always, always, always my go-to destination when riding PEVs when I lived out in the Estates. Let me go grab something and uh, we'll continue. Got my iced coffee. Um, did a battery check, it says battery's at 40%. My GPS mileage is um, just under 38 miles. I still think I'm doing okay. I think I should get home without major incident. This will be gone quickly. I wonder if I could put the windshield down with the chin bar up. I think I can. I don't know. Gonna wait, thank you. I guess there's one way to find out. Well, golly, you can. Yeah! Until drink. Interesting. Okay. Well, let's let's go with that look then. This is a new look. This is that spot where I got into trouble with the uh, Lynx demo, where it was uh, flooded out unexpectedly. It's looking dry. I think is that water at the end? No, I think it's dry. Luckily, we are 
far enough into dry season uh, that this is dry, although there's a lot of silt and, and whatever, sand and shit on the road, but not water. So we don't need to do an ET Max uh, water resistance test. That's good. Now on uh, Logan Boulevard, this will uh, eventually turn into Santa Barbara. So I'm basically taking this for uh, how many miles? 12 maybe? Not quite sure. Yeah, 10, 12. And then uh, a couple right turns and then I'm home. So cross my fingers. I'm still doing uh, upper 20s right around 30. So ET Max has been doing fine. I don't remember if I mentioned uh, when I got this wheel it was in racing mode. That's one of the reasons it was making the loud noise it was making when just sitting there. Uh, I, d I have switched it to off-road mode. I don't know if that has an appreciable difference on uh, range results, but just uh, FYI. I should have put the uh, pit zoom on here. I didn't think about it. Um, just um, on this you know, pedestrian slash bike path here and I'm, I'm, I'm coming and there's some kid See him in the distance, head down, looking at his phone while he's walking. And as I get closer, he's drifting, drifting, drifting over to my side because he's looking down at his phone. And I'm like, yo, heads up. And then he gets startled and he, then he looks. It's crazy. But if I had the pit zoom, I could have given him a nice little uh, you know, electronic reminder to stop looking at your goddamn phone so much. Eat. Back in the bike lane, back in the bike lane, yay. So despite being at one, one uh, bar on my battery display, I still find myself cruising almost 30 miles an hour without trying. So I don't know if that's good or bad. Probably okay. Or anyway, I guess it is. I'm surprised. I've had my uh, mask down, or the windscreen down, for the majority of the ride back, and it hasn't really bothered me because of the ventilation holes that are in the helmet. I thought uh, it would be really uncomfortable, but it's not that bad. Although I know it muffles my the audio, I do know that, so that, that's less than ideal. But otherwise, uh, it's a pretty good deal. You won't believe this, but the, the GoPro screwed up again. What I was saying was I've had the, the windscreen down pretty much the entire ride back almost. It hasn't been as bad as I thought it would be. Um, now that I'm sitting still, it's, it's not that great, but when you're moving, you have uh, all this ventilation. The ventilation holes in the LS2, so it's not nearly, hey, oh. Good move, buddy. Good move there, BMW. He's on my right in the turn lane. He comes around and goes straight. BMW drivers, they're a special kind of breed. Um, so anyways, yeah. When I'm moving here, uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm, I'm pretty comfortable, I'm surprised. Now, when it's 95 degrees in the summer, that's probably not gonna be the case. At least right now, not bad, in the low 80s. All right, I just got my first low battery beeps. Triple, triple beep, not constant. But I'm gonna slow down. Still doing mid 20s, but um, yeah, I'm just right around 49 miles. First beeps. So yeah, maybe I won't have to uh, get extra miles on the greenway if I'm beeping now, because I'm probably, probably uh, two miles from my house. So we're just gonna, we're gonna slow things down. And unfortunately, in this section of road, I'm hitting some uh, headwind again, so that's that's not great when you're on low battery. It's uh, often on beeps. It's not constant beeps, so I'm still optimistic. Keeping, you hear that beeping? Maybe you can, maybe you can't. Um, whoa! All right. Keep my speed now 18-ish. Seems 18-ish. I can keep the beeps away. Wow, this feels slow in an ET Max. <laughs> I remember when this used to be like hauling ass. Uh, not anymore. And unfortunately, uh, the Goatee wheels don't have the uh, long range mode that the veteran wheels do that allow you to discharge the cells to a lower level, which comes in handy in situations like this. I used it uh, on the links when I did my range test on the links and I uh, have it turned on on my patent as well. Now, obviously, you don't want to be routinely discharging your batteries super low it's not good for them but to be able to do it in a pinch when when necessary uh, it is nice and, and you cannot do that with uh, bigoti wheels although uh, who knows maybe that'll change in the future okay gonna be a little touch and go now i'm on 
holding at 15 and I'm still getting some beeps. I have, I think, two miles for my Animat. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's probably two miles yet, so slow and steady, slow and steady. Yeah, going into this, um, based on other people's range tests, well, I guess Marty's really the only one that's done a serious range test on the Lynx, or not on the Lynx, on the ET Max. I'm trying to think if anyone else had. They don't because they're a pain in the ass, right? Beep, beep, beep. I was expecting to be able to do this without having to nurse at home, but I'm definitely going to be nursing it. Hopefully they can make it the whole way, I don't know. We're, we're just going slow now. I'm not feeling tilt back yet. When I say that, I'm going to jinx myself. But, um, yeah, we're still, uh, still moving. Yeah, at this point, it doesn't matter how slow I go. It's the, it's the symphony of beeps. Let's see, I got two traffic lights to go to uh, make it to my street. Uh, one thing I neglected, if you can hear me over the beeps, one thing I neglected to talk about was the uh, pedals. Uh, the pedals have been relatively comfortable. You know, despite being on them for more or less three hours, uh, my feet still do have some sensation in them. They're not completely numb, so that's, that's a positive. So I would say these pedals are uh, relatively comfortable. The stock Pagodi pedals. I just rolled through the church parking lot, hoping to pick up some holy, some holy energy to get me home. As I'm now turned onto my street, I have less than a half mile to go, beeping like crazy. Wow, I made it barely made it into the entrance of my development. Barely, holy crap. Too tight for comfort, man. Too tight for comfort. All right, can we make it into the driveway? Let's see. Bang. All right, here we are. We made it. All right, at this point, it's so low, it's beeping while standing still. So let's, let's, let me just quick check the stats and then we will turn this off because it's annoying as hell, right? At least it annoys me. Uh, let's see. Did the Pagoda app crash? Uh, evidently my Pagoda app crashed for some reason. Low voltage warning. Battery, it says 10%. Let's see what the actual voltage is. Yes, I'll say it's me out here beeping. You can come out if you want. Freaking Pagoda app. It's annoying. Why am I not seeing the voltage? I saw it before, why don't I see it now? Okay, uh, voltage, 127 for your voltage nerds. 127.1 volts right now. So uh, yeah, and the trip was about three hours, as I thought, three hours trip, long. All right, let's turn this off. <clears throat> Should we turn this off, baby? Isn't that annoying? Yes, it is. It's very annoying. All right, turn that off. Okay, so oh, sitting feels good. Let's stop the GPS. All right, so based on the GPS, it's um, somewhere close to 53 miles that I went uh, GPS distance with the last you know couple miles at least being a beep city. Um, I'm not, um, so 53 miles GPS distance on a 3,000 watt hour battery wheel. Um, yeah, and that's, that doesn't um, impress me. Elsa, what are you doing? That's the first time that, that's the closest I've ever come to feeling like I was gonna have to trolley the wheel back. Um, yeah, I did uh, that distance on my uh, veteran Patton. Uh, I did it on the um, V13, although, although that was out that was out in the States, different path, but I did that same path on the veteran Patton. And, uh, but again, the veteran wheels allow you to go deeper into the pack to lower cell voltages. Elsa, stay close here, please. Um, so that makes a difference. And I know that there, there's been debate and, I've, and I've, I've always said that at least based on my results, it seems to me, it's always seemed to me that higher voltage wheels get appreciable range to lower voltage wheels with the same pack. Now the, the counter argument to that is, well, the reason for that is because these higher voltage wheels you can go faster on. So you're just, the, the, the reason for that is you're going faster. That's the reason that you're getting less range is because you're going faster. And that is true. I mean, speed kills range, right? But in this, on this uh, ride, I was doing the same kind of speed that I've done on all those other wheels, you know, right around 30-ish, maybe low, you know, low 30s. So I was not going like 40 miles an hour on this wheel. Uh, and I still uh, came in clocked in right about 
50-ish. I would say like usable range before it started to beep. Was I at 50? I don't think I was even at 50 actually, maybe 49, 49 and change. So I don't know. I think, I think scientifically people would say that a higher voltage should not mean less range. Uh, but in my um, experience, it, it doesn't seem to hold up. I don't know. I don't know. So anyways, guys, if you found this video interesting, please think about giving it a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. If you're going to subscribe, you hit the notify bell that's over there somewhere. Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. Uh, what do you think of those numbers? Like I said, not, I'm not blown away, but um, again, based on some other uh, results, I, I shouldn't, um, like I said, Marty, Marty's done, I think, the, the official range test that I've seen, but when they took the ET Max to uh, Mount Baldy again, that they were having issues with range with the ET Max. So, but of course they were riding very fast, but still it is what it is. I still have to do a speed test on it. I'll probably take it to the swamp. I have all that kind of fun stuff to do. I actually was off today. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. Today's Monday. I was off today. I'm going to be working a regular work week, but I'll see what I can get done uh, during the week. So that's all I have guys. Um, hope you have a great week and until next time, duck man out. I bet, I bet this is my GoPro. I think so. And then an, and another box. Oh, it's like Christmas. It's always like Christmas around here. Thank you.